to, in short, we call this the Employment Law Reform Bill, um, and it addresses specifically uh, sections of the uh, statute uh, that deal with uh, the Missouri Human Rights Act. And uh, there are some things uh, that have prompted uh, these changes, in particular things that have been going on in our judicial system with some of the court decisions that have come down. And uh, there are multiple things that this is made to address, and I'll try to be as succinct as possible in going through each one of these and give you a brief synopsis. I know that we've probably got several witnesses here today that will probably be ready to uh, address several specifics, any that may come up as they testify. But I kind of want to give you a schematic of what it is that uh, we've done as far as making changes to these particular statutory sections. Um, to begin with, what uh, has been addressed is uh, in uh, a string of cases that have been rendered. Uh, it's been established that uh, in, these, in these cases uh, that uh, a contributing factor is the thing that uh, would give rise to some liability on behalf of the employer. Uh, that the uh, employer terminated the person uh, based upon some sort of uh, discrimination. Uh, I'd also mention that, that we added in here the whistleblower part of this, which will be new to the statute, and I'll address that in a minute. But uh, what it establishes is that the threshold for liability on an employer is that it be a motivating factor rather than just a contributing factor. Uh, as you can imagine, there might be multiple reasons that uh, go into the ultimate termination of an employee. And if you just have a contributing factor, it could be a relatively small portion of the reason, but yet an employer is still held liable. We're now uh, stating that it must be a motivating factor, which rises the standard as far as what role that uh, discriminatory uh, act would play in the termination. Uh, another thing that we've done is we've uh, addressed the issue of individual liability. As you can imagine, if you had like a mid-level uh, management individual out there who would be individually named in a lawsuit. Um, we've, we've taken steps to try to eliminate uh, that liability for the individual since they would be acting within the scope of their employment with the employer. Um, another thing that this does is uh, try to define the case law that's out there and directing the courts to apply a standard that's more on the, the uh, federal level um, what we've seen is that uh, oftentimes at the state level, uh, the, the courts are not permitting the cases to be reviewed underneath a uh, summary judgment. And uh, for those of you who may not understand that, what that would be is that the parties would each file uh, some uncontroverted facts in a matter early on after some initial discovery, um, and then have the judge decide the case based on those uncontroverted facts. And uh, we're not seeing that transpire at the state level at this time. So we've taken steps to try to make sure that it follows more the federal level where the, the summary judgment is considered in these cases, which would uh, clearly eliminate a great deal of litigation for the parties involved. Um, we've also taken steps to uh, limit the damages that are awarded in these cases um, and it's a graduated scale depending on the size of the employer um, and the cap on damages for instance uh, for an employer between five and a hundred employees would be a hundred thousand uh, a hundred two hundred employees would be two hundred thousand uh, I'm sorry I'm, I'm reading these wrong five and a hundred would be fifty thousand dollars cap uh, the 100 to 200 employees would be a $100,000 cap, 200 to 500 would be a $200,000 cap, with a $300,000 cap being for anyone with more than 500 employees. Um, an additional step we've taken is to protect public uh, entities uh, and subdivisions. Uh, in doing that, what we've said is that in these cases, there would be a bar on recovering punitive damages in these cases. Now that does not transpire to the public employer, uh, I'm sorry, private employer. This deals only with the public entities uh, where that these uh, cases would be brought underneath the HRA. Um, we've also, and, and lastly, what's, what we've added in here is something that has not been seen in the statutes before and it addresses uh, uh, the issue of whistleblower employees. Um, and that's, that's something that, that would be new to this particular section of the Human Rights Act. And uh, as most of you probably would, would know by now, it's where an employee is terminated 
for reporting uh, that the employer had done something unlawfully. Um, and, and that definition that it has to be an unlawful act is also included in the statute uh, revisions that we've, we've put forth here today. And uh, basically that's a, that's a summary of uh, the, the changes that have been made. And uh, if anyone's got any questions, I'd be happy to entertain that at this time. Good afternoon. Rich Albershawn, General Counsel for the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I am a registered lobbyist as well. I'm here to testify in support of House Bill 205. House Bill 205 is one of the Fix the Six Coalition Bills, which is brought forth to the legislature as a, as a remedy and fix for case law, which has interpreted the Missouri Human Rights Act in derivation from the Federal Civil Rights Act. What we're asking the legislature to do is bring equity within the two. And while I appreciate the questions which have been brought forward, there are instances all throughout state government, all throughout business, where we must say, as a general exclusion, that discrimination is not the proper place within our, within our business. Discrimination is expensive. It's wrong. We start from that very premise at the Missouri Chamber of Commerce. In fact, myself, I have been a member of the Missouri uh, Martin Luther King Commission and have been one of those who has brought forward the Martin Luther King Commission here to Jefferson City as well. I absolutely do not agree with discrimination. My members do not agree with discrimination. This bill does not absolutely require the legislature to accept a policy whereby we agree with discrimination. That is absolutely false. What you're seeing here is merely a mechanism by which the burden of proof can be sought by which remedies, according to court rule, can be had, and by which damages can be ascertained, so that there is some certainty for our business community. 